Hey guys, what's up? It's the Merc. Glitch Lord. Here from Pool Shed Games, and today we want to talk to you about two things. Zombies, aka the movie World War Z, and a little bit of experience we had at our friendly local gaming store today. Because we found out that we have one. We have a store. We have a store in town. And it's somewhat friendlier than we thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> but first, uh, we're going to talk about World War Z yep. and kind of what we thought. And... Uh, if you haven't watched World, World War Z, it's all right. We're going to try to keep this somewhat spoiler free. But think. there might be spoilers. There are probably going to be spoilers. So just just as a warning, I mean, I don't know. It's not like a movie where it's like you're not. Damn it! I missed. Yeah. I you're not, I you know I really wanted to see that ending. You're not <laughs> really going for the story, right? Right. right. <laughs> but anyways, I guess first thoughts on the movie. Uh, I thought it was all right. Mm. I didn't think it was terrible. I know a lot of people hate it. I know a lot of people have really liked it too. I thought it was alright. I, you know, for what it was, it was kind of just like an action movie mm. that happened to have zomb- zombies in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was alright. wasn't great. wasn't terrible. Just alright. For me, going into it, my expectations were pretty low. Oh yeah. Because you know, I talked to Max Brooks, and yeah. he came to my my school, and I got a chance to talk to him a little bit, and he he kind of sold the movie pretty low compared to his book, right. which I had the chance to read. So going into it without very high expectations, I was surprised. I I mean it was it was enjoyable. It was um, it was an action movie. Yeah. And and you have read the book. See, I, I yeah. haven't read the book, yeah. so I was kind of and you know, but from hearing what you were saying about the book, mm. I was kind of like, well, this might not be so good. <laughs> but I got to have low ex- expectations also. But uh, I don't Which, know. Some, sometimes with a movie like World War Z, having low expectations. Is better than being really excited and having yeah. huge expectations because then you're not disappointed. Right. Uh, kind of as is a, is a kind of an example. I know I'm personally kind of excited to go see Pacific Rim. Yeah, I definitely am. And too. if it sucks, <laughs> <You'd be> dis- <laughs> I'm going to be like, really oh. disappointed. From what I've heard, though, that movie's pretty awesome. Yeah. But anyways, that's besides that's, the point. <laughs> that'll be the next movie review, probably. Yeah. But um. But. Uh, yeah, also with, with movies like World War Z, I think it's important to uh, separate the book from the novel. Yeah, you do have to divorce the book from the movie. Yeah. Um, very few movies that are based on books stay true to the book. So right, right. I mean, even like Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. that went, that, you know, very, you know, a went lot. astray from the book at several points. But it's still a great movie. Oh, yeah. You just had to be yeah. able to go like, okay, this is Lord of the Rings, the movie, this is Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings. The book, and same with yeah. TV shows like Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though they're really, really close to like what the book is, there's still little things where you just have to be able to go, okay, this is the show. Mm-hmm. Just separate the two and deal with it. But. Uh, I will say that like the action scenes were good. I mean, they were really good. Yeah, um, definitely. Like the scene when the bus flips over. Uh, it's not in America. I thought when they were showing the preview, I was like, oh, that's in a, that happens in America. <laughs> no, that's not in America. It's it's, uh, it's in another country, yeah. which I don't know if we should talk about what other country that's in because I don't want to spoil things for our our viewers. Uh, I'll say, like, some of the pros, I thought, like I said, I thought the action scenes were really good. There were some tense moments, yeah. uh, more so after they got out of America, funnily yeah. enough, and, and ended up in uh, an- another area. Yeah. Uh, the zombies, which I don't like calling them zombies. They weren't... They were I mean, more like the infected from Twenty Eight Days Later. Yeah, I think that would be actually a better word. Infected. Yeah, they were they were more infected. They weren't the shambling yeah. dead. They were like fast, like infected, powerful. fast running. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were they were creepy. Generally, they did weird yeah. like weird body motions. It yeah. was it was like they didn't you know they really did a good job of showing that the people didn't have control of, like their nervous systems. Yeah, yeah. That's. Brad Pitt was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I thought he was good. I, I thought he, he did well. Some of the acting, at some points, it felt kind of like a you know made-for-sci-fi movie. In the beginning. Not so much with Brad Pitt, but some of the other characters. Mm. In, in the beginning, especially, I was like, wow, I could have stayed home and, and you know, watched I could sci-fi. Have, I could have watched Sharknado <laughs> and got the, the same Mega thing. Mega crock. But then I'm, after... I'm not going to lie, I have Sharknado recorded on my Are TV. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, it, it's probably pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lost my train of thought. But anyways, after you know, after you get into the movie a little bit, the acting gets significantly better. There was some things but. I thought were kind of cheesy, though. Like, I know, and I'm I'm gonna say it. And if you haven't seen the movie, I'm sorry. At some point, they end up in Israel. Yeah. 
And I know the Israeli military has female soldiers. And I don't know if the director of the movie was trying to make some kind of a point about women in the military, or if he just wanted to get some good-looking girls in uniform <laughs> to stand around Brad Pitt. But it seemed kind of funny that the entire security detail protecting Brad Pitt and the other person he was with in that part of the movie, all female. Which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. No, no, but it's no, kind of but it, like, was, it was just a little <laughs> weird. It was... Is the Israeli Air army completely comprised of women? Or? Yeah, it was, it was, I don't know. It was just it was, it was something... I know what you mean, I know what you mean. And uh, the other thing, again, with, with the Israel thing, was uh, they built walls yes. around the city. That's a huge spoiler, I guess. Yeah, spoiler. The movie. But uh, they built walls, and <laughs> actually... Like, from 30 seconds ago until I'm done talking about this, it is just one giant spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> but it was one of my biggest problems with the movie, so I have to talk about it. Mm. They build walls around all of, what was it, Jerusalem. Yes. They walled off Jerusalem. And uh, it, it was a pretty cool look. Yeah. But here's the thing. They didn't put lookout towers or cameras or anything on the walls right. so they could see what was going on right. on the other side of the walls. Yeah. And even if they did, nobody was monitoring those cameras or anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean it was he, like, there may have been stuff there, but yeah. nobody was... Personally, you would think, if you're going to build a giant wall around your town or city to keep you safe, you're going to have battlements on the wall to fight from in case... I don't know. The zombies decide to be like the bugs from Starship Troopers, make a wall of bodies, and climb up your wall. <laughs> yeah. That was... It didn't work out well. That was a pretty huge problem I and, had. And the whole reason that happened, which, I mean, this is still a spoiler zone, is because uh, there was singing going on inside. Which, I mean, it was kind of a moment where it was like, oh, they, you know, they're, they're going to make it, they're singing. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, wait a minute. The singing is attracting, is attracting the zombies yeah. who are attracted to sound. Yep. And, you know, they don't respond until the zombies are, like, over the wall. Which, you know... So... They had to know they were coming. There was helicopters all over the place. There was helicopters. There was... There had to have been. Somebody was, like, just watching the zombies. Like, oh, somebody was trying to get Somebody us. was watching uh, adult entertainment <laughs> instead of watching those camera monitors. And he looked at the guy, oh my god, what's going on? He got caught yeah. with his pants down. <laughs> literally. Yeah. But yeah, that was probably one of the biggest things in the movie. Were. But yeah, th those probably two minutes are the biggest spoiler we're going to give for the yeah. movie. Um, um, I would get into the ending, but I don't want to get into spoilers. The only thing I'm going to say about the, the ending, ending was decent. Is it, it to me? It felt kind of like they had a whole big budget. Yeah, and they did all these cool things with the budget, like the cool walls around Jerusalem and. Yeah. Uh, the cities being overrun and the cool scenes of like the fleets at sea. Yeah. And then it's like they got to the end of the movie and they're like, oh shit. Incredible. We spent all our money on, <laughs> on CGI and things and this little story thread, this seed of a story yeah. that we gave you right here at the end, we can't really follow up on that. So it's yeah. over. And there were a lot of those throughout the movie where it was like, oh, well, this might be a really interesting thing. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they were at one point, and this minor spoiler. At one point in the movie, they're looking for the original, uh, like where it started, yeah, where yeah. where the where the infection started, yeah. and it, after a while, it's kind of like what, what what happened to trying this, to find that. I don't and think it's this like is, halfway through the movie, so I don't think it's really a spoiler to talk about this. In my head, I thought the ending of the movie was going to be them going and finding Patient Zero. Yeah. With the the little bit of story seed they gave you right. towards that's the end, kind of what they led you to think. Because I was like, oh well, that makes sense. Now they can go to where they need to go and find patient. And they were like, nope. Yeah, and it's it over. Does it complete almost three sixty when they're in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and they end up doing something completely mm -hmm. different? So, I mean, you know, I mean, I think part of it was was because it was only an hour and fifty five minutes long. Yeah. Um, yeah. a lot of times, like it feels like today, movies usually are like two hours. Or two out, two and a half hours long. Yeah. It just, it, I don't know, it felt like they kind of cut it off yeah, too soon yeah. for, for that. Which, I mean, I like a short movie every now and then, yeah. but I felt like at the end of that, kind of wanted a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know more about what was going to happen, which they kind of tell you, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like, 
Well, the, and I, I thought the trying to find Patient Zero story arc was really cool mm-hmm. and interesting because there were some really interesting, really you know, kind of cool scenes where they're searching for them, they're getting clues, and, and it is kind of like, oh, I wanted to find out who mm-hmm. Patient Zero was and where it came from, but then it just kind of and uh, dissolves. But that's, I think I've talked about some things that, there were just little minor things. Yeah. Like, sending Brad Pitt's character, who is the main character, out to where they believe the outbreak started, and the security detail was like three Navy SEALs. Yeah. It suffered from an Aliens moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. It did. It's, <laughs> in every Aliens movie I've ever watched, there's not enough security detail. <laughs> in World War Z, it was, the, it was the same thing. It was like, you can have three, three Navy SEALs. Yeah. <laughs> They'll protect you. You'll be fine. You have to save the world. Here's three guys. Yeah. Go with you. You're good. You're fine. You're going to the place that was overrun probably first. Here, have three yeah. three security. You'll yeah. be fine. But overall, I would say you know it's it's a good summer action movie. Yeah. It was it was fun enough to just kind of like sit in the theater and be like. Ooh. And I will say it was a pretty good theater. Movie. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what a bit, what I think of it like on a DVD. If you had a decent home, sized screen, it might be it might still be alright, but it was pretty decent. At the you know, it's not like Cloverfield, where if you didn't see that in theaters, it not worth seeing. Because Clo- you remember Cloverfield, oh, yeah, it was just yeah. it was it was an experience in the theaters. Yep. And then I have it on DVD, and it's just like, eh. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, oh, I forget the name of the movie, but that the one where it's the one girl and they're in the, like an office building and it's zombies. Quarantine. Oh, quarantine. That is kind of like yeah. that too. I mean, it's a great movie. Mm-hmm. It was really awesome in theaters. Yeah. Then I got it on DVD and I watched it. I was like, well, it's still good. It's, it's, it's a different cool experience. Yeah, it's, it's a different, different experience. But yeah, I'd, I'd give it probably a. Uh, if I had to go on a, a scale of, like, 1 to 10, I'd say maybe, like, a 7, 7 and a half. Yeah. That's about what I was going for, like, a 7. Because, like, they, they did sort of abandon some characters and, like, that group of military. At, yeah. At, at, it was like, here's a cool group of badass soldiers <laughs> that have survived this yeah. entire thing. And they're, they're out of the movie. Yeah. Also, there's the scientist. The, the scientist... That went with him, where it's just like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get into a spoiler. Yeah. But he he does, it doesn't end well for the scientist, yeah. put it that way. Yeah, it's that very was, quick, was and I thought he was. I thought this character was cool. It's like, okay, yeah. he's gonna, he's yeah. got the answers. Like, like I said, I mean, no. go see it. Um, don't expect like a zombie movie. Expect an action movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, expect a movie kind of in the vein of like Twenty Eight Days Later, Twenty Eight yeah. Weeks Later, though not quite as good. <laughs> At least to me, I, I yeah. really like the 28 days. Yeah, they're, they're very good movies. But, you know, it, it was decent. It was decent. Uh, I mean, it's worth seeing. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So now that we've talked about zombies, let us talk about our friendly local gaming store, yeah. which did not have zombies no. at it. <laughs> Had zombies the game, but did not yeah, have zombies Lots of zombie it. games. Uh, well, I guess the first thing that stuck out to me is the amount of magic cards. Yeah. A lot of magic. Yeah. It's definitely a yeah. very magic-heavy store. Yeah. Which uh, I, don't, I don't have anything against magic. I don't play mm-hmm. magic. I yeah. used to play a lot. Yeah. But uh, it, it's definitely, that's probably their main... If you're in the Williamsport area and you want to go to a magic gaming part. store that focuses on magic, the gathering, yeah. then our, our friendly local gaming store is the store for you. Yeah. Now, uh, I will say this. I've, I've known the owner of this gaming store for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh Back when I got into Magic, he was the guy that ran tournaments. Now he yeah. owns his own store. He's a good guy. Um, I've always liked him and gotten along with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but he is hes very Magic-focused, and it's not a bad thing. And it was cool talking to him because he knows that, that the Lich Lord and myself are more miniatures gamers. Yeah. Um, he said that Thursday nights at the, at the shop are kind of like miniatures gaming night where they do 40K. He said some War Machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, BattleTech, which I know some people don't even know what BattleTech is because it doesn't really sell much anymore. Yeah. But um, we were saying kind of, you know, oh, we've we've gotten out of 40k. We kind of play War Machine and Hordes and some other games. And the, the thing I will say that was kind of cool is he said, oh, well, you know, if you want to come down and teach guys how to play a game or help yeah. them learn War Machine and Hordes because I guess they haven't been playing very long, he he kind of encouraged that. Right. Which it's kind of a step in a, it's a good step in a direction that that I like. Yeah, I, I thought that was that was. I think it's cool. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, new games, mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of really great games out there that people don't know yeah. about. So I mean, 
to go to be able to go down and teach somebody a really great game like Dystopian Legions or like Infinity, uh, Infinity or I mean even if it's just uh, War Machine, which are, mm-hmm. War Machine and Hordes is yeah. awesome too. I'd love yeah. to teach okay. you know yeah. get playing with a bigger group and stuff. I mean we play with our gaming group up here at the Pool Shed mm-hmm. every now and then, but it'd be nice to have. Uh, you know, a day where it was just okay. We're gonna play miniatures mm-hmm. because a lot of times in the group yeah. we ha- we play uh you know role, role playing, playing and stuff like that games. or board games. And, and we uh, don't always do a lot of uh, miniature gaming, yeah. but that would be nice to be able to do that. Uh, the 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 other thing that's kind of cool is uh, the owner Eric. Uh, he he runs like a a farmers market stand too, yeah. and he he sells some like canned peppers. canned peppers and and like pickles and things. Which I haven't tried them. I've heard they're really good, and I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of just cool because just I mean, yeah. I am a big fan of organic food and locally grown food, so yeah. mm-hmm. you know you can go in there and you can help two local businesses at once: your local right. gaming store and a, and a local uh, food producer. Which I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think we, I have to be honest. Seeing like the magic and stuff, seeing seeing magic together, kind of made me want to play again. Gotta be honest. I didn't have that feeling. <laughs> oh yeah, it's kind of like, oh man, I, I'd like to play. I just but I, it was kind of like I had that sense of vertigo when I saw like, oh my god, it's 14th edition. Yeah, <laughs> when, I played, when we it started was like with six. Portal, Portal, it's like, oh, I got a lot of catching up to do if I'm gonna yeah. play it. Yeah. See, for me, magic is like crack. It's like <laughs> I beat that addiction. I don't need to go back. I don't need to go back. I don't need to go back. <laughs> it was it was I cool though. It was cool going in and seeing all the game, all the people gaming. Yeah, there's a know. lot of people in there. Uh, we went to some other stores that started, and it, mm-hmm. there, it was just dead. It was like a Friday yeah. night, and it was yeah. But it was great. There was a lot of people there, mm-hmm. you know, and they all seemed relatively you know, happy. Yeah, you know. The another cool thing was he he kind of said that the area we were in wasn't the only area he had yeah. for gaming. I guess he had. He said he had like another room. Mm-hmm. For uh, to expand into miniatures gaming, and he said he even had like another room that was kind of a more uh, private room for people that wanted to do like uh, role playing game sessions and things like that. Which I thought that was a really cool yeah. uh, idea. Uh, he carries basically, you know, like your your standard stuff. He focuses on magic. Yeah. You know, I, the, he's always has it's his thing. Nothing wrong with it. It's just it's what he likes mm-hmm. and it's what he focuses on. Uh, he has a pretty good selection of 40k yep. and fantasy. Some fantasy. Yeah. Uh, like there, he had some new releases there, like the Wraith Knight, the pretty much all the new 40k codexes. Yeah. Uh, he only had the new high elf codex for fantasy. But yeah, yeah. Army book. Army not book. Codex. Yeah. But he um he had War Machine and Horde stuff yeah. there, which was kind of a smaller selection. But I have a feeling that if we started playing, and yeah, there was more yeah, of a crowd that yeah. played, he'd probably stock more. I think the biggest thing is... Well, and he also mentioned, which I know not only uh, from talking to him, but from being a big buyer at the war... You know, buying a lot of my stuff at the war store, and back when the gaming store was up at Mansfield, where I go to school, sometimes stocker, like stockists have a hard time keeping privateer press products in stock. Yeah. Um, they have a hard time sometimes re- restocking yep, people, yep, yep. so it's not always the the gaming store's fault. Yeah, definitely not. Um, Other than that, there's a lot of board games, which I, I, I thought that was cool. And the, the board All games types, like, run the gambit were, from in production to, to games that like, are out of production. There was you even might like not have even French, heard before. There's like a French uh, version of Civilization. Civilization. I was like, yeah. what is this? I mean, yeah. we'll probably never play it, but it's awesome that it's there. My French is my French is weak, so <laughs> I knew enough to go. That is in French, but that was yeah. about it. I couldn't really read anything else. Yeah, that, I thought that was really cool. They had a ton of board games, um, uh, and there's like he had older miniatures there. Like, uh, he actually, had two shelves of of Starship Troopers. He had the base yeah, game yeah. plus like two shelves of of Starship Troopers minis, yeah. which we all know that game is dead it's, and gone. Uh, yeah, well, I was I was surprised. Like, oh, yeah. That's yeah, Starship Troopers, but mm-hmm. huh. uh, like I mean, it was it was an interesting experience to go down there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of torn between now trying to support my friendly local gaming store and continuing to buy online, yeah. namely because I'm a poor college kid and I get the <laughs> discount, and I know yeah. that I won't get that at the friendly local gaming store. 
I'll probably still buy the majority of my stuff from the war store, but yeah. like, but the nice, it's always nice to like go in see something. It's like, oh, I've been wanting that the impulse. Buys. You get the impulse buy. Yeah. I, I like that yeah. though because if you go online, you know what you want, you know what you're gonna get. But if you go to a store mm-hmm. and you just see something, it's like, oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You might just get it and you might really like it. So, and the other thing I will say is like, I would much prefer to get my army books and my rule books at a friendly local gaming store. Because I can get them quicker, and right. I can I can read through them and you decide what I want to do. Right. You know, I don't have to. It's always nice to be able to see a book yeah. before too, because sometimes there are some companies that have really kind of low quality, mm-hmm. you know, books in general. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you're you've been thinking about getting some, you know, kind of off the wall game, mm-hmm. and you're at a store and you see a book, you can flip through the book, you can mm-hmm. see what it's all about before you make that purchase. And I I don't think I think that this time around he's only had this store open for. A, a year? Yeah, I think or so. Or a little over? Yeah. Might, it might be a few years. I'm not... I don't know entirely. But it feels like there might be room to expand and room for, for uh, you know, more stock, more product. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I definitely would say uh, the name of the store is uh, White Knight's... White Knight Gaming Room? White Knight Gaming Room and Eric's Edibles. Yeah. Which Eric's Edibles is his, his farmer's, farmer's market thing, yep. and the gaming room is White Knight's Gaming Room. I would definitely say if you're in the Williamsport area, yeah, go check it out. Uh, check it out. It's at the Pajama Factory, which is on uh, Rose Rose Street. Rose Street. Yep, Rose Street. It's a big kind of like old factory. Yeah, it used to be a factory that they into converted into a lot of different stores. And shops. It's a nice little, uh, nice little it store. It is a nice little store. They have a lot of different kind of like stuff going on there. Might be it's pretty cool. Might be better served going in the winter. Yeah, it was a little warm in there. It was a little warm in there. <laughs> but we're in a heat wave, too. It, but it so, is I mean, ridiculously hot here in yeah. Pennsylvania at this point in time. Which, I mean, if we have viewers in, like, you know, the Southwest or something, they're yeah, like, what are you talking about? If you're about? out there in, like, the Midwest where it's, like, in the hundred, you're laughing at us yeah. for saying it's a heat wave. It's like, I live in Arizona. You're you're dealing with cold weather up it was, there. It was, like, 98 today. Yeah. Maybe 100. It was, it was hot. Let's put it that way. <laughs> And, you know, if you're used to 100 being your normal temperature, yeah. you're calling us a bunch of sissies. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, yeah it's used to like 80. Yeah, when you're used like to like uh, 80, 85. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I said, if you're in the Williamsport area or, well, the, the Pennsylvania area, yeah. really, like Williamsport, kind of central Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the other, the closest other gaming stores I know, if there's one in Athens, yeah. which is Fat Man Comics, I believe is the name. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there used to be one in Altoona. I don't know if it's still there. I don't remember the name of that store. Okay. Remember we went up there with uh Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy had really awesome like uh <laughs> handlebar, mustache, uh beard thing. Mutton chops. That's yes, what I was thinking okay. of. He had really awesome mutton chops. And those are the only other two well, no, wait, there's I think those are the only other two I can think that of I off know the top of, of my that head. I know of at least. There may be uh, more. There's but... there might be more. Yeah. Um but you know, White Knight Gaming Room and Eric's Edibles in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Check on it out. Rose Street. Check it out. It's Pretty awesome. Pretty cool shop, and Eric's a pretty good guy. Yeah, uh, like I said, I've known, nice him, I've known him for a while. He's a nice guy. Yep, we uh, talked to him for a while. It's always nice when you can go in to a store. Yeah, and, you know, somebody yeah. talks to you. You know, I mean, he he's known me long enough that he knows my dad because my dad played magic when at the tournaments. He used to he used to run, and you know, he remembered my dad, and he asked me how my dad was doing. So it, it is nice. That's, it's definitely a local business. You know, the guy remembers you and talks to you. Yep. So so that's that's kind of. My, t- you know, our take on the friendly local gaming store we have here, yeah. um, and our take on World War Z. Yeah. I think that's probably going to wrap up this video. I have set up a bunch of terrain <laughs> on the other side of this table. We and are going to do it. We are going to play Infinity. We are going to play Infinity. <laughs> we, we have yet play. to play. I have the quick start rules on the table. It is going to be Nomads versus Ariadna. <laughs> Even though I want to use my painted Aleph, I'm going to use Nomads instead because I think it will be more fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to go do that. So hopefully, hopefully you guys like the video. Um, if you have something to say about World War Z, please leave us a comment. If you don't agree with what we said or you have something to add, uh, or if you have something you want to say about your friendly local gaming store, let us yeah. know. It's always cool to hear about other people's stores. Definitely. Uh, other than that, you know, give us a like or a comment or a subscribe, and we'll see you next time here on Pool Trade Games.